Hey, today we'll review the latest Freedom's Flame Warbond. We'll discuss each weapon, covering the pros and cons, and demonstrate its effectiveness against various enemies such as Hulk, Chargers, Spore Chargers, Impalers, and more. If you find this video helpful at any point, tap the like button below and subscribe. We'll start by discussing the new cookout shotgun. What I found appealing about this new shotgun is its ability to stagger enemies and its great ammo capacity. Although reloading does take a little bit of time, it also features incendiary rounds, just like the IE Breaker. And while it may not be fair to directly compare it to the incendiary breaker shotgun, considering there's different firing rates, if we look at other factors, we'll see the pros and cons of both weapons. The Cookout is a solid shotgun. The most attractive feature it offers is the ability to stagger enemies, just like I mentioned, giving you some breathing room by pushing back foes with its tough incendiary rounds. This works well against enemies like the Brood Commanders, Alpha Commanders, Stalkers, and even the Hive Guards, which are those smaller, orange-faced, medium-shielded enemies. On the other hand, the Cookout is less effective against Automatons. I'm sure you guys could guess that one. Although it can stagger bots like the Devastators and Rocket Devastators, I'd recommend using an SMG like the Pummeler instead, which also has a great ammo capacity and can stagger bots. The Cookout, however, is suitable for smaller to medium-sized enemies, but it takes several shots to destroy an orange battery part on a Hulk, so I wouldn't recommend using it against bots. The next primary is the Flam 66 Torture. I'm sure you all have the burning desire to know whether or not this flamethrower is worth using. I'm going to be straight up with you and tell you the truth here. I do not think it's terrible, but it's not great either. It's amazing at inflicting good amount of damage to smaller enemies, and surprisingly enough, I was not expecting this weapon to do as much damage as it did to the Impaler. But as you can see, I was able to take out the Impaler easily with the Flam 66 without any issues. The only problem with it is that it's not effective against chargers or spore chargers, and I've got a few examples here to showcase. If you are going to use the Flam 66 on these type of enemies, I highly suggest using the Stun Grenade because you can slow down the charger from, you know, pushing forward. And this will give you enough time to either go to the left or right side of the charger and start toasting its tail end. So, toast its back and give it a few back shots enough to make the end burst and at that point point your flamethrower to either side and start inflicting damage this will be enough damage to take out the charger but it's not as useful as it probably would have been prior to the uh, flamethrower changes right in the recent patch you can also do this with the spore charger as well now if you can i would absolutely recommend using a stun grenade then an orbital strike if you do not have it available while in game then I suggest using the stun grenade with the flam 66 because it's not a bad idea this is of course if you are planning on using the flam 66 or some of the other flamethrowers right but in general you would probably want to use a rocket now or one of the orbital strikes as i just mentioned so what about the bots it's also not too terrible against the bots however at the same time i do not think this is a weapon you should use against bots you have better options out there like the Scorcher or even the Plaz 101 that can do a decent job against the Automatons. That aside, how well is the Flam 66 on bot planets? It's good enough for small enemies like the Troopers, Scout Striders, and so forth. It can also do a fairly decent job against the larger enemy types like the Devastators, Berserkers, except for the Hulks. Sure, you can take out a Hulk, not with direct damage of course, but if you can get behind the back and shoot at the battery part or the weak spot, you should see some positive results. And even though it's possible to take out Hulk, I still do not recommend using it on planets with bots. And last but not least for weapons, we have a new secondary called P72 CRISPR. I will say this secondary is comparable to the Flam 66 if we were specifically talking about the damage and the fire rate. The capacity is a bit different with the Flam 66 currently having a capacity of 80, while the CRISPR is at 30, which makes sense because it's a secondary weapon, right? If you were to put the ammo stats to the side, I think you will find out that the CRISPR is basically a mini version of the Flam 66. The only difference is that the ammo capacity and the fact that you can carry the CRISPR with one hand, which might be useful with the ballistic shield. The damage is similar to the Flam 66, as I just mentioned, and it can inflict a good amount of damage to smaller enemies and even the medium-sized ones like the Alpha Commander, Brood Commanders, and it does a decent job against Stalkers. And for the larger enemies like the Chargers or Impalers, it might 
be a struggle due to the ammo capacity. So I would suggest using the shotgun or the Flam 66 because you will see some better results and you might be way more successful with those two options instead of relying on the secondary. So with the bugs out of the way, what about the automatons? I'm sure you can guess what I'm about to say and that it's the same with the Flam 66. I do not recommend it, although it can be used on automaton missions, I just believe there are better options out there. Next we have to talk about the new Firebomb Hellpod booster. First off, I'll tell you what I do not like about it, I believe it's a bit of a lackluster booster because the damage on impact is sort of weak. What I mean by that is that you can take out smaller enemies and some medium sized enemy types, but the fire explosion radius is poor and very underwhelming. What I do like about it is that you can send down a supply drop on the terminates and it applies the same exact effect as well. This works with the hell pods, like all of them by the way. So my thoughts on this booster are that it's okay. I do not see myself using this booster often. I do believe it's a unique booster, but again, I just do not see myself using it, nor do I think it's an effective one. Continuing forward, we have a new passive ability on the two new armor types, as well as the new armor that's currently in the store. The passive gives you a 75% fire resistance, which is quite enjoyable. I find it to be useful on Hellmire with the flame tornadoes, the hulks that inflict the fire damage, and most importantly, you can survive friendly fire as well. Literally, friendly fire. Now, I do not have anything negative to say about it, so I think it's an awesome passive that will be useful on missions where you might receive fire damage. It's good against both bot and bug planet biomes. Um, speaking of bugs, there is actually a bug that I saw in game with the newest emote that's in the Freedom's Flame Warbond. What you can see here is when I chest bump this player, I noticed he could not move. So I'm not too sure what's going on here, if that was a one-time thing. But yeah, it's probably a bit buggy as of right now. I did move as I, you know, got done doing the chest bump. Not too sure if that plays a part, but it's kind of bugged right now. So now you're probably wondering, is it worth picking up? Is it worth purchasing or farming the super credits for? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I do not think so as of right now. I think the only weapon that's worth it in this war bond is the cookout shotgun. The two flamethrower weapons are a bit mid. They're not bad. They're not terrible. But I think if the developers did not make the changes to the flamethrowers specifically, I think this right here would have been amazing. But as of right now, it's just not that great. However, I will say that the cookout shotgun is probably the best weapon in this warbond and it actually stands out the most. I also really enjoy the passive which is the inflammable that gives you a 75% resistance damage to fire and I think that one's absolutely awesome. The only items I did not enjoy honestly was the flam 66, the secondary, and I will say the booster is just underwhelming as well. That's kind of the keyword here I guess. It's underwhelming, lackluster, it's not as great as it could be. If you feel different, let me know your thoughts, your responses down below because I would love to, you know, see what you guys think about this. And I am keeping an eye out for it and I will be responding to some of you in the comments. And by the way, my voice is a bit raspy for some reason. I probably should find some water. But hey, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. We're now going to talk about the top three comments from the previous video. The first comment is by raghav1026. We will stop nerfing things. Nerf fire before fire war bond so that was an effing lie the second comment is by grim gatsby remember when people complained about the flamethrower being able to kill chargers i don't and last but not least we have jardob every new update needs a bit of playtime. my brother in christ you had two months to test this effing patch because you said let him cook the devs of this game are something else and there are the top three comments thank you guys so much for checking out the video and i will see you guys in the next one